What are some names and some different positions that the Ravens could possibly trade for before the deadline, which is tomorrow? This and much more on this special trade deadline edition of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Super team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, the special trade deadline edition. What question from Subs is, is a series where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this. And if you want to be part of it, you send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, by the way, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Chris. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam. I was just thinking Deshaun Jackson has been given permission to seek a trade from the Rams. And it also came out that if they can't find a trade partner by the deadline, then they may just give him the ax. Anyway, do you think the Ravens take a crack at it? No, I don't. Uh, seeing as though Sammy is still out, I'm just curious. I know you always give us uh, your honest opinion. No, I... I don't think that they would give up draft picks or give up whatever to bring in a Deshaun Jackson. Now, if he becomes a free agent, I mean, I even still think the chances are slim. I, me, personally, I wouldn't mind because it's another speedster, it's another deep threat. Um, but I just, uh, via trade, no, I don't see it happening at all. And I think it's just a very, very tiny, tiny chance, even if he becomes a free agent, that they even do it then. And I expect him to become a free agent because if teams know, like, all right, they, well, it, it, it could work both, both ways, actually. Because if teams know that a player is getting ready to become a free agent, if the, if the team doesn't trade him, then they could just wait and sit back and be like, all right, we just wait till he gets cut. But if, um, on the flip side, if teams know that that player is about to get cut, they could be like, ah, uh, you know what, let's just, let's send them whatever. So we can get him because that will give us the opportunity on him being a free agent uh, because we will have him. We don't have to fight for, with, with other teams to acquire his services. So we'll see what happens with Deshaun Jackson, but I don't think he'll be a Raven. This question came from my guy Isaiah. He said, should the Ravens trade for Dearness Johnson? Um, Browns are not ever going to trade Dearness De Johnson to the Ravens. Um, <laughs> No, that like no. It it would be nice if he was, but it's not happening. We saw how he was like yesterday in that game with Bacon and little RPO, but it's not gonna happen. And he said, or Alexander Madison. They both look like studs when they got their chance. Now Alexander Madison, I wasn't too familiar with him uh, until last night because he had been a name that I had been hearing from some Ravens fans. Um, but watching the game last night, I do see okay, he got that little quick burst. He he he, he got hands out of the backfield. Um, so I think he could be a good fit, uh, but whew, I and Ra the Vikings getting ready to play the Ravens in less than a week. Um, so him, uh, him as well. No, I, I don't see it happening at all. Next question came from my guy Ben G. He said, "Hey, Graven, I was wondering if you think we should trade for Mitchell Schwartz because with Makari being out for around six weeks, that is usually how long it takes for a high ankle sprain." Hope you and the fam are great. Keep grinding with your content. Best Ravens channel out there. I don't know about that last part, but. Um, even with the first part, they don't have to trade for him. He's a free agent. He's a free agent. There, there's no trades involved. He's not on a team right now. Um, so if they were to sign him, they could do that if they wanted to. But I heard that maybe he might not really be that healthy. Uh, I'm not sure what his status is right now. So, yeah, they don't even have to trade. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, thanks for the channel, fam. Hey, no, thanks for all the great questions from subscribers, fam. Uh, I have noticed the inconsistency again, especially after this loss to the Bengals. When Giro had Bateman in the offensive sets, the Ravens were able to make big plays and be effective. We have seen this before. When something is working, Giro changes what he is doing, tries something else, and it leaves everyone scratching their heads. I'm still convinced Roman will be going after the season and Ravens sign Eric B. Enemy as offensive coordinator. All right, with that, before we get into the rest of your question, because he's not done, I just, I don't see that happening. Why would Eric B. Enemy go from being Chiefs offensive coordinator to being Ravens offensive coordinator? To make a, a lateral move from the Chiefs to the Ravens? Like, he, he, I'm sure he could come in and do a phenomenal job, but why? Why? Next, next position should be head coach for him. He shouldn't be worried about, oh, no, I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to leave here and be an offensive coordinator another time. No, man. Mm -mm. But anyway, uh, also, Wink needs to rethink blitzing so much against teams that can throw. 
I think everybody would agree with you on that. It, it, he just got to be, he got to be smarter. He, he got to be wiser about his decision with Blitzen. Um, and he just, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Ravens don't have Marcus Peters, and Averitt is not the answer for this secondary. Well, right now, uh, he's the biggest answer to the question. Uh, but anyway, he said, not throwing any stones at Anthony Averitt, just not enough experience to be a complete DB. Well, how do you gain experience? How do you gain experience? It's, it's like, all right, we're hiring. This job is hiring. You go to the interview, and you're like, all right, here's my application. I sent my application, da 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 I filled out all that stuff. All right, hire me. Let's go. Let's get it. And you say, wait a minute. But, but you don't have any experience. Why should we hire you if you don't have any experience? And trust me, I'm speaking from experience with that. That would be one of the most frustrating things ever. When a, a job is hiring and you, you, you know, like you, you feel like you could do it. But they say, oh, no, nope, you, you got to have experience. We want people that have experience here. So how can I gain that experience if I, if I don't get hired? How can I gain that experience if I don't get the opportunity? Same thing with Anthony Averett. You say that he's not experienced enough. How can he gain that experience except from what he's going through right now? All right, moving on. He said Ravens should trade some picks for a proven defensive back and a veteran offensive lineman. If Ravens are to sustain any momentum, personnel is key. Um, so for a proven DB, this has been one that I've seen floating around a lot. Um, a name that I, I know a lot of Ravens fans or well, some Ravens fans been floating around is Xavier Howard because he's that Marcus Peters type of cornerback because, you know, he's he going to get his interceptions in. He's going to get him in. And the Dolphins right now, they, what are they, one and six, something like that. They one and something. But um, so you, you can expect, like, from teams that are not necessarily out of it, but they are doing really, really bad right now, fire sale. A fire sale. Like the, the Texans, you know, they're they willing to give up everybody. The Dolphins could be on that same boat. Um, just, just teams. Now, Jaguars are tricky now. They, they're a tricky one because they're down bad, but it doesn't seem like they're going to have a fire sale. But we'll see. But um, not like and, and deadlines, they spark action. Deadlines put pressure on teams and organizations to be like, all right, you know what? Something that they might not have been thinking about before. When the deadline comes, they might, oh, you know what? We'll, we'll think of it. We'll consider it now. And then they might be willing to do a little more than they were before. Um, so, but as far as offensive linemen, it would be nice to get a nice quality offensive lineman, an upgraded offensive lineman. But if this player was really an upgrade at the offensive line, uh, would he really be getting traded away? Now, this is where uh, the team, the same thing I was talking about with the team, that's where that comes into play. If a team's bad and they have a good offensive lineman, yeah, they, they, they may consider it. They may be like, hey, you know what? We'll come up we'll come up off that guy because we, we losing. Ain't nothing going on this season. Let's get a draft pick for him. All right, cool, whatever. Um, so that's just something to think about for anybody that they may trade for, especially when it comes to an offensive lineman. Really, really any player, but... Um, certainly with offensive linemen. Next question came from my guy Greg from BMO. He said, what's up, Engraven? Tough loss, but still a long season. In the Ravens Super Bowl 47 year, unless my research was wrong, it was also week seven before the bye. Also having the bye on Halloween week, Ravens got blown out on the road by the Texans. I know a completely different situation and team, but still hopeful for this year. One bad loss doesn't define a season. It means the same if the game was within one score. It does, but um, the way that they got beat, it just... They, they exposed a lot of the Ravens' issues, and hopefully that loss served as a wake-up call for the Ravens to where it's like, all right, look, we, we're 5-2. We just got our, our beat, butts beat, and we, um, we need to fix these issues. If we're going to have long-term success this season, we got to fix these issues. We can't just skate by like we've been doing, especially last year. They did the same thing where they, they just didn't. And it was, and it was tough. It, it's tough because you got salary cap. Uh, and you can only do so much with your roster, but they, they tried to skate by last year and they got through for the most part, but them, them, them issues got super exposed in the playoffs. You can't do that this year. Um, so anyway, he said, uh, anyway, my question is, could this loss to the Bengals and, oh, okay. I should have read the whole thing. 
because I end up saying exactly what he was to end up saying. Uh, he said, could this loss to the Bengals encourage EDC to be more aggressive on a trade? And not who, but which position would you not think they'll go after? But which position do you want EC to go after? Why you had to make that so confusing? Like, you know my brain already be messed up enough. Why you had to make that so confusing? Why you ain't just say, which position should EDC go after? And he said, also, um, uh, oh, I hope you and your family have a good one this year. Go Ravens. All right. So, um, which position? Uh, me, I would say running back. And uh, my, my priority would be running back in offensive line. Now, a like a, a crazy one. And this this may ruffle some feathers a bit. But it is what it is. Uh, it's all business, nothing personal. Um, maybe. And you could say you could give somebody an opportunity. But a safety. Maybe a safety. And maybe like a, a safety that got range, like really got range that could make up for a lot of what the Ravens are lacking on the back end in the secondary. So that and, and, and again, a lot is on wink, too. So much is on wink, but it's just something to think about. But my priority would be offense. I think offense, Um, because I, I feel like with offense, again, it hasn't been play calling for me. It's been execution. And the offensive line, like when Lamar has had time, oh, yeah, ooh, ooh, but he don't get time too often. So I would say offensive line and also uh, running back as well. Those would be my, my top two. Next question came from my guy, Jared. He said two short and sweet questions. One, do the Ravens miss the energy Mark Ingram brought to the team? I think so. I, I, I think so. They still got a lot of energy, but, yeah, Mark Ingram energy was just different. Um, he said this before he was officially traded to the Saints, but – the question and answer, they still stand. And he also said, did the Ravens make a mistake by keeping Ronnie Stanley and trading Orlando Brown Jr.? Mm. Well, Ronnie Stanley is better than Orlando Brown Jr. Um, it's possible that Orlando Brown, with more and more experience, he could have ended up just being better than he has been this season, especially because of the big switch. Um, and the big switch for Orlando Brown Jr. wasn't from right tackle to left tackle. Mm -mm. It was from a run-heavy offense to a pass-heavy offense. Uh, Orlando Brown Jr., though, I feel like he is um, the type of player that we're really missing on this offensive line. That, like my guy Howard brought up a long time ago, that just big mauling guy that'll just knock somebody down, man. I feel like we just we, we're missing that. We're missing that 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 power, that that strength, that just. Ah, I'm about to knock you out. Something like that from an offensive lineman. Um, so yeah, I, but it, overall, like, and and with Ronnie Stanley, his injury history—he already had an injury history. He had an injury history, uh, so this was no surprise to the Ravens. Um, didn't know it was going to end up being like this, uh, because he usually missed like a couple games a, a season or whatnot. Um, but did they make a mistake by keeping Ronnie and trading Orlando Brown? Uh, player-wise, no. Um, but if you're just strictly talking about the injuries, uh, then that's that's up to you. Next question came from my guy Mike. He said, hey, how are you and the fam? I've been a subscriber for a long time, uh, and it's my first time writing. Hey, appreciate you, man. He said, my question is, out of all the years the Ravens have been in the league uh, since 96, I believe I found that the Ravens are a team that likes to be cheap when picking up players from free agency or trading. I feel like we end up regretting it and leaving a lot of good players out there and a lot of good opportunity uh, with players out there when they leave for other teams and get signed by other teams instead of us taking advantage of it uh, or we wait until the players get old <laughs> and, and they're tired of whatever team uh, that they on and then the player decides to take a chance on us uh, it, it just it kills me to this day especially when Jalen Ramsey was tired of the Jaguars and they were trying to shop him around and we didn't take advantage of it or try to trade for him or get him in any way uh, and I thought that, that, that at, at that time our defense was Hurting to me. Uh, that was not smart. Can you imagine him on one side and Marcus Peters on the other side? On top of all the other weapons we have. Uh, which, that was crazy. Now, no, now with that, that would have been impossible. Because it would have been either or. It wouldn't be, alright, we getting Jalen Ramsey and we getting Marcus. Oh, that would be nice. That Marlon Humphrey, Jalen Ramsey, and Mar That'd be nice, but that was impossible. That wasn't what was going down. Jalen Ramsey... And it was said that they tried to trade like Hayden Hurst and some picks to get Jalen Ramsey, but um, no, it, it, it would it, if they would have got Jalen Ramsey, then that would have been it. It wouldn't be him and Marcus Peters. Uh, so and Marcus Peters was the backup plan, but it it, it worked. Um, anyway, 
He said, uh, it, why do you think that is, that the Ravens are cheap, and who do you think is responsible uh, all the, all the, for all this? And do you think it is Steve doing it, or Eric DaCosta, or Ozzy still pulling the strings, or John? I was wondering your thoughts. Be blessed, and may God bless you and yours. Appreciate it, Mike. I think it's everybody. It's, um, it's, it's, it's all of them, for the, the reason that the Ravens are cheap. Um, and wh where they're cheap at, um, to me, the, the biggest cheapness is at wide receiver. That's that's where it's at for me, wide receiver. Um, because they they got some defensive, but you, and you talked about you talked about signing free agents and trades being cheap. Both of the with both of those, um, wide wide receiver, especially free agency, uh, trades. Um, they, I don't feel that they're really cheap when it comes to trading for players. Uh, of course, we when a, when a big name that we love comes available, uh, we want the Ravens to go get him. We like, all right, hey, go get him now with that Julio Jones. Even though he's been hurt a lot, see, oh, uh, it's it's tough because I know some people could say, oh, well, look at Julio, he's been missing all these games. He would have missed all the games for the Ravens too. We don't know that, and we'll never know that. But with Julio Jones, that was one right there where it was like, oh, hey, Julio, hey, Julio. Falcons, they coming up off of Julio. They got to get rid of him for salary cap reasons. So Julio ain't going to be there. What y'all going to do? And Titans got him for like a second round pick or something. Something crazy, man. And I was like, what? Really? But I know Ravens, they, I'm sure they didn't want to take on all that salary cap or whatnot. Because um, Titans had to do some maneuvering to uh, to get him uh, under the salary cap. But um, it was like, ah, like why? Why not? Uh, but it, it's, it's worked out so far. Uh, for the Ravens, it's also worked out for the Titans, but even though they haven't really been like having him available, uh, um, but yeah, free agency, I would definitely say that's how they are wide receiver. And Ravens, they just like to, um, now with their own, they take care of their own now, they take care of their own. But like, what you saw Flacco, seen Ray Rice, Terrell Suggs, C Mac, uh, Lodi Nye, uh, Ray Lewis, Air, like they, they take care of their own. They they do that. Um, Dennis, I mean, the list goes on. But when it comes to outsiders, maybe the Ravens are just maybe they're scared. I don't I don't know. Maybe they're just scared. Like, oh, if we give this outsider too much money, then ah, oh, it's gonna backfire. And they hey, that cheapness almost backfired. I mean, when they weren't cheap at receiver the last time, it almost backfired. When they used to Ryan Grant to that crazy thing, oh, that was so nasty. I was like, ah. No personal offense to him, but I just didn't feel like he was the best fit. But when they signed him to that big deal, I was just like, whoa. Like, Ray, what are y'all doing? And then they were like, uh, uh, yeah, we we, we regret this. Um, hey, hey, f fail his physical. Please, fail his physical. All right. He got a toe injury. He can't pass the physical. All right. Get him out of here. He's no good. Then with Michael Brockers, when they signed him to that deal, Ray was like, ah, mm. You know what? We we regret this. Let's all right. Hey, send that failed physical. Do it. Run it. Run it. Run it. All right, Michael Brockers. He got an injury. Um, cancel the deal. It's off. So Ravens. I think that they just they may be a little worrisome. Like ah, oh, they they don't want to regret it. I think that's what it is. You I know you were saying that you feel like the Ravens regret their decisions where they don't sign these guys in free agency, but I feel like the Ravens, they almost don't want to regret signing somebody for this big deal and then it ends up not working. So I think that's why they take care of their own so much because when they take care of their own, it's like, all right, we groomed this guy. We've seen this guy from the beginning because we drafted him and, and we brought him up and he's done his thing for us. So we, we know this player. We know the ins and outs of this player. We know what he's good at, what he's bad at, his strengths. His, we, we know this guy. So we can trust that when we sign him, we know what to expect. But if you go out and sign somebody else and we give him all that money, oh, we just don't know. Next question came from Makai. He said, I wonder if Stephen A. Smith is still thinking that Burrow is better than Lamar. And he said, hashtag, don't catch the chickens before they hatch. Keep up the great work. <laughs> hey, um, what a game that was. What a game that was. Now, um, lost in all of that. Well, I know not with Bengals fans, but Joe Burrow actually had a really good game. You look at the numbers, he had a good game. That that interception was a bad one. That, that interception was a great play by that uh, the defensive lineman, the outside linebacker, whatever he was. It was a phenomenal play. Um, but Joe Burrow, he still threw three touchdowns and only one pick. Uh, but, um, yeah, you, I'm sure that, it, like, if 
with the Bengals, that's that's how that's how it get talked about by the media. Uh, they'll say, "Oh yeah, Joe Burrow, despite everything, he still had a good game." Now, if Lamar, say for instance, Lamar, and it's true that he did have a good game, now, but they lost, so the game wasn't good enough. But if that was Lamar, and he had the same stat line, same same type of play, they will say, "Ooh, they'll say, oh, Lamar ain't that. He ain't all that. He sucks. He's this. He that." But it is what it is. Next question came from a guy, Jay Lee. He said, Ain't Raven hope ball as well. I was just on Raven's YouTube page and saw their banner with Ronnie, Hollywood, Lamar, Tucker, Patrick Queen, and Mandrews. It made me think about the faces of our offense and special teams and defense. Uh, the person you think of when you hear Raven's offense and special teams are Lamar Jackson and Justin Tucker, respectively. However, who do you see as the face of this defense? Realistically, I, realistically, I would say Patrick Queen, but he's been playing subpar this year. Um, yeah, I would say Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey or Calais Campbell. Um, and Marlon Humphrey, his season has <laughs> it's been, it's been a little rough. It's been a little rough. Uh, well, and Calais Campbell, he's been actually playing pretty good this year. Um, but yeah, I, I would say either one of those two. Oh, man. And speaking of Marlon Humphrey, next question came from my guy Lance. He said, hope everything is good with you. Let's get down to business. I know Humphrey is not your traditional corner in the NFL. How isn't he? What do you mean? Why, why you say that? I don't. I don't understand. Um, but anyway, he said, do you think the Ravens paid him too much money? No. It's market value. Marlon Humphrey had been playing great. He had been playing phenomenal. He had been making so many plays for them, all the forced fumbles. A couple of interceptions here and there, but interceptions are really not his thing. But the forced fumbles and just uh, being able to do so much, playing good as an outside corner, playing good as a slot corner because Tay-Tay would, would go down with injury and Marlon was forced to be kicked inside. So, no, I don't think they paid him too much. All right, we're moving on. He said, uh, and since he is not a traditional corner, do you believe they should use him more as safety next year after we get Marcus Peters back? No, 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 no. No, not at all. Next question came from my guy Franco. He said, hey, man, hope everything is good, which you haven't heard anything about Chris Westry in a minute. Any idea when he'll be coming back? When he comes back, our secondary will be much better, I believe. He'll help. He'll certainly help. Um, but again, I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing for me is will Wink put him in a position to succeed? Uh, because you can have the best corners in the world, but you got you got to realize if they're struggling, if they need some help, something's going on. Now, Chris Westry, yes, he will help. I think you could um, that that will give you just just for those bigger body wide receivers, because uh, Jimmy Smith, you know, they, they've been putting him on tight ends and whatnot. They've been using him sparingly. Uh, but this would give you more flexibility in your usage of your cornerbacks as well. So having him is definitely better than not having him. And yeah, like like you said, he will certainly help. Shout out to Graven.